McKinney. Bob McKinney. Bob McKinney. Bob McKinney. No better coach or role model out there. And he still does not know the specific reasons for his dismissal. Supporters of McKinney's, however, say they can't put their trust in the board or the administration. The board has said that because it's a personnel matter, they can't share certain information about why McKinney was let go with the public. McKinney said he was never told why he was being forced out. Countless people are stepping up to defend McKinney. Many of them said they are still waiting for the district to explain why it decided to part ways with the coach. McKinney led the Red Rams to five state titles in his 19 years with the school before being fired on Monday. The administration's hands are tied because people think this is a right and, and they're afforded more of a say and a voice in a public school than they are in a private school. Um, and not that they don't have a say in a private school, but when there is a conflict that can't be resolved at a private school, it's easier to deal with. When there's a conflict at a public school, it's a lot harder to deal with. It's more than just basketball. It's more than just a success. It's the impact he's had in our community. So many kids uh, who play for him learn to play for him, learn to play for each other because of the, 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 uh, the example that he sets. And legendary basketball coach Bob McKinney with his 500 win career total. you got to be at this a long time to get to 500 wins. Um, you know, it, it was, you know, I'd be lying if I say I wasn't aware of it. I mean, it was, you know, it was an exciting moment, and Jafar Kinsey got his 1,000th point uh, the same night. And, um, you know, so we had, uh, we had a fun little celebration, and, and uh, it was near the end of the year. You know, truthfully, once, once we kind of got through that, which was a relief more than anything, you know, we, we had to get back to work because we were getting ready for the playoffs. It was a great day. I mean, we had a blast. We made signs. We had um, the t-shirts made. Um, it was really special because, you know, for the last, I don't know how many years, my whole life, we've been traveling to games. We've gone to away games. We've gone to tournaments. Um, so we've witnessed all of his accomplishments as a coach, and we've seen the, like, the love and the passion that he has for the game and for the players. And for the families um, and just how hard he worked it was just it was a very special day and I definitely will never forget it and I don't think anybody anybody in the family will I think in his time the last 15 20 years I mean JD's got to be one of the most successful basketball programs I think in definitely in section three any coach that said you didn't feel a certain amount of pride when you see one of your players walk onto the court at the dome or you know at Madison Square Garden or or they're getting a chance to play in the final four is it's, uh, it's very exciting. You feel a lot of pride and, and you feel so happy for them because to, to get them to play out their, uh, their goals and see their goals start to come true for, for the game is uh, it's really it's, uh, it's memorable. It was very rewarding though in the long run um, to have players like Andy Rountons, Brandon, Tyler Cavanaugh. Um, I personally never had day one on my team, but it was very rewarding to help be a small part of what they accomplished. I mean, anytime you're sending these guys to a legitimate D1 school like Syracuse, you're doing something right.
Bob McKinney was told to either resign or be fired, many sprung into action. Countless people are stepping up to defend McKinney. Bob McKinney returned to the home of the Red Raiders, this time on the visiting bench. We've been left to fill the air with rumors, innuendo, and it's, it's, it's not what this community deserves. It's not what Coach McKinney deserves. I was found to have done nothing wrong. In fact, I was told you never saw this coming. You never had a chance. You could have stood tall, taken the hit, and they would not have won a lawsuit. It would have been over, and now look at the fallout. I, I needed some closure as best as I could get it um, with JD. Um, I, I, I felt there were things that needed to be said for me, and I couldn't say a lot, but I could say enough. There needs to be change. What is right and wrong needs to be looked at and clearly explained. All that had to happen was for administration to lead <clears throat> loyalty, courage, class, and solid communication. They may have changed the course of this year. Thank you for your time. When you think of the biggest names in high school basketball coaching, I mean, McKenney's got to be one of the three or four biggest names. So when it, this story comes out, you know, he's won all these state championships with all these JD teams, and all of a sudden we hear he's got to quit or he's going to be fired. I mean, I was there 19 years. It, you know, I, I felt supported most of the time. You know, obviously no different than any coach anywhere. There are times you don't, you don't get what you want in the budget or, you know, you get called in on something and you don't agree. But, we, uh, you know, for 16 years at JD, we, anything like that we worked through. And um, my last two years, it was not good. Um, I didn't feel supported, have support. Um, I was terminated, and it was, uh, I would say, wrongful, the wrongful termination. But, um, you know, it is what it is. It's, it's life, and you have two choices. You can bury yourself in self-pity or pick yourself back up and keep going. We were all pretty shocked by it. I mean, you know, we've see, I've seen coaches get fired. I've seen coaches forced to resign over some pretty meaningful stuff that, you know, maybe they should be fired. But this was, I mean, it was something with the parents. I mean, you're... It's just tough. it's just like tough for me to see the school board take the side of the parents over a coach who's won all these championships and you know no major complaints against him no not a lot of criticism against him but I guess uh, that's the world we live in. It essentially was a parental complaint um, that started actually a whole year ahead of that. Um, um, a parent felt that I was uh, picking or singling out her son. Um, and, you know, there were some issues with the player trying to get at me and practice over something that wasn't even related. It was, it, it, the, um, so he tried to get at me and instead of suspending him, we didn't suspend him. And she decided th at that point, um, this parent to, that I should no longer be in the district and went through the state department and it became what's called retaliation. So if I sat him out and they didn't think it was fair, they could sue me for retaliation against the mother. So I, I essentially, for a year, couldn't, I couldn't coach him the way I would coach the other 13 kids. We had a racial slur at the end of a practice um, right before, the day before our sectional final. I read on Facebook that I had created a racist environment. Anyone that truly knows me, including many of the 200 supporters who showed up at the school board meeting and spoke on my behalf, know that that is the furthest, furthest thing from the truth. Interestingly, we, we, we took care of it. We were in touch, we had notified both parents. Parents were brought in, everybody was okay with it. Everybody made apologies and made amends. Um, in today's world, that has to be reported to administration. The administration then step, stepped in, suspended a player, which led to all the fallout of you know, why one player had gone a year and a half and never been disciplined for anything, and this happens and he gets suspended. And you know, so it, it, I think what it did is it opened the door for this parent to really stir the pot again. I also was informed by a parent that the reason I was let go was that I had violated policy. This clearly goes back to communication. And that's what happened. And my opinion is that it was easier for the school district to fire me than to try to fight this, continue to fight this parent, fight this battle.
Um, and I just want to start by thanking everyone here uh, for being here this morning, for your patience through this process, because it has been a process. Um, I wasn't sure that I could ever coach again. I, I wasn't sure I wanted to coach again. I was exhausted. I was exhausted just from coaching those kids, which was a challenge and a half in and of itself, never mind all the outside stuff that had gone on. The day I said yes, I still wasn't sure I had the energy left to fight back to, to rebuild another program. Um, at this time, finally, I'm proud to be able to tell you all that Mr. Bob McKenney has agreed to become the head basketball coach at Bishop Grimes. The timing was interesting because we had a vacancy around the time he was going to be leaving Jamesville DeWitt. Um, there obviously was a period of time where uh, he needed to figure out where, where he wanted to go and what he wanted to do. You know, I went to SIF and I said, don't, I'm out of this. I'm tired. I don't know if I even want to coach again. You know, you guys need to figure out what you're doing here. And if he deserves another year, give it to him. I, I, if I take some time off, that's fine. I may decide to never coach again. You know, we had a fallback plan, but... Uh, it, it was, uh, you know, fortunately we were able to convince him to to want to be a part of our basketball program. I want to thank the uh, Bishop Grimes School and Athletic Board, uh, the hiring committee, the, the high school admi administrative team, Pat Kinney and David Wheeler. Well, I've had, I, I guess I've had many press conferences. I don't know that I'd ever walk. <laughs> I know I walked into the gym and I looked at Sif and he said, wow, I, I'm accepting the job for the New York Knicks. What? <laughs> <laughs> or is this a high school basketball team? That's actually what he said to me as we were walking from his office to the, the table that we had set up in the gym. Um, and, and, you know, I, I had set up, I think I'd set up a dozen chairs around our, our table. Um, and we had bleachers set up behind it, and our students filled the bleachers behind it. We allowed any student who wanted to come in and watch to be a part of it. It was awesome to see all the students come out you know, like supported and we're so thrilled to have my dad coming on as their basketball coach. Just very special because not every school and not every district, not all students will do that for a new coach. And just the way that the school and the community reacted to having my dad come to Grimes was really, really exciting and really special. Um, they really made us feel like home. To the players, uh, you guys have been patient. You've been great. Um, we have a lot of work to do. Um, there's a lot of changes that are going to be made. Some won't be easy for you. Uh, uh, when I heard he was going to come here, I, I was very excited because he'd already been our PE teacher, so I already knew him. I knew what kind of guy he was. I knew the success he had. So that was obviously exciting for me, the thought of being able to compete at a high level. We were very thankful that we got him. We, I had no clue what we were in for. All the sprints, suicides, running, it was, it's crazy. From years previous, we never like really had coaches that like knew what they were talking about or like knew drills and stuff that we could do. But when he came in, we started like the same routines every day. It was shortly after the hiring when we started having open gyms and, and watching. I, I guess for the first time, felt like you know, well, this isn't going to be awful. We 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 had a chance to be okay. Obviously, we won a couple games early that really helped. You know, we beat West Hill in that third game, who's been the perennial Class B power out of our area. Um, I think we knew we were pretty good when we beat them. We had a chance to be pretty good. I'm not going to lie to you. I didn't think we'd be as successful right away, but I also, knowing Coach as I have, and I've known him well before, I, I knew that with the kids we had, we have, we have quality kids, and I knew he'd be able to do a lot with them. Uh, just how much, I wasn't exactly sure. It was, it was quicker than I thought. Um, he surprised me. But you know, I, I'm not surprised that, that we're on the path that we're on right now as a program. I didn't know how much of a difference coaching made. Um, he came in and with the way he taught us defense and his new offensive sets and things like that, um, the whole program turned around and the whole school turned around really. 
Uh, since Coach has taken over, the school spirit has definitely gone through the roof. I remember when I played JV in 10th grade, it was the JV team and a couple people sitting up in the student section. And then the last couple of years, it's been packed houses every night, um, fun atmospheres to play in. When we started to have success and uh, people started to see that, uh, a lot of people came out to watch us. It just kind of felt like a movie, you know, that school kind of <laughs> got together. The kids constantly talk about how much he's changed, you know, the school atmosphere and the environment. And um, last year when they went to States, I mean, that was one of the coolest experiences. I was so glad that I was here to witness that and work here and know the students as well. It was amazing. Um, when we won it, I didn't know what to think. I was so excited. I mean, I've never really been a part of a team that was that successful before. Uh, so like being a part of a team that like got to put their name up on the banners was quite exciting. We had a very good team the year before. Like we, everybody on the team was good basketball players. Like skill wise, we just never had the coaching and the influence as we did. So we knew if we get Coach Mack in there, and he would really help us a lot with, like together. So we knew we had the talent to be good, we just didn't have the right coaching. You know, it, it, it felt good coming out of a situation that wasn't good, you know, and, and, and had made you question whether or not you wanted to do it, you could do it. Uh, was your system good enough to do it again? And, and so, so all of that. So it, it was, but I, th I think most of all, just the, the reaction to the Bishop Grimes community was, was so special. Um, it, was, it was special. It will be one of the most special championships for me. The suspender look. Oh my gosh. Go! Jonah, run to the block! It's his trademark. It, he brought it over from JD. It's, it's symbolic of his greatness. You know, every coach has got something. We've got, they've gotten that call every single time. Oh yeah. He, uh, he takes on that look with uh, pride, I think, in my opinion. Uh, they call him, they nicknamed him the Spaz and the Suspenders. That's the same call! That's the same call, Eddie! You give that to him every time! And it really does fit his character. Uh, he's a great guy and he's just an amazing coach. Let the kids finish this game! That's not a good call! Bad call, Chris! Yeah, you know, I guess I'm used to him now. It's kind of neat though when you go back to officials, if I really think he's getting too far, I can just grab him and, and pull the suspenders back. If he sees one of them, he'll, he'll say hi. They're, they're friends, but when he's standing on the sidelines, I don't think he takes prisoners, no matter who it is. Oh no! You gotta be kidding me! His relationship with referees actually is not as poor as it seems. Eddie, he dribbled it off his knee! He dribbled it off his knee! That's bad call! Uh, I think it's his trademark, just like, you know, uh, certain coaches have certain trademarks, the way they, you know, the way they dress or what they wear. Uh, you know, Coach Huggins at West Virginia wears that kind of windbreaker look, and Coach Bayheim has the, the jacket and uh, sport jacket and pants. Jay Wright has the probably $10,000 suits. He got hit! He took him out, Eddie! On the, he gets a little antsy when he's coaching, so it appears as though he's a little on edge. He stepped out because he got bumped! They get on him a lot. He gets on them a lot, and uh, it's something funny to watch once in a while. He stepped out because he got bumped, Eddie. He had a foul. Um, yeah, so I just I got the suspenders for Christmas, and early in January I wore them, and we had a huge win, kind of an upset uh, against one of our rivals over there, a team we'd had trouble beating, you know, we kind of knew we were taking the next step in the program, and, you know, I, I wore them the rest of the year, we ended up making it to the Final Four, <laughs> um, so I got some more suspenders and wore them the next year. Through most of it, they've been, a, I think, just a good luck charm, it's been uh, you know, I don't want to say it's my signature. I, I was actually not going to wear them anymore when I left JD. I, my thought was, fresh start, you know, maybe we'll go with the, the golf shirt, golf polo, you know, dress pant look, something like that. And, you know, the, the, the day I, I got hired, Lucci uh, Vigiliati gave me, a, gifted me a pair of suspenders in, in Grimes colors. So, you know, so obviously, 
I guess at that point I realized I was still going to have to wear them at least once, and then we won that tournament, and here I am two years later, I'm still wearing suspenders to all the games, so. Well, yeah, I don't know. I don't want to be, I don't, you know, I don't think I want to be Jim and be like 70. <laughs> um, I, I miss it less when I'm not doing it than when I was younger. Um, there's always been a period of time after that last game that you win or lose of just recovering. You know, I call it my recovery period. The recovery period has gotten longer as I've gotten older. Um, you know, when I was younger, it would be a couple of weeks, and then I, you know, then I couldn't wait to get in the gym. You know, so as I've gotten older, the, the, the bounce back has been a little bit harder. You know, I, I, Charlie wants me to coach his kids. Finney's in seventh grade, so it's five years. Um, after, I, 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 think, I think I can do five more years. You, know, you kind of go back to where you're like, wow, is this, can I do this? How many more locker rooms can I walk in and have to say goodbye to all the kids crying? And, you know, you've done it for 32 years. And, you know, that's the worst part of the job, you know, that, that day. And that happens to all of us almost all the time, which makes what we do completely insane. I think his legacy is going to be just how he impacts people in general. I don't think, I think the way he changes lives, both, both bat in terms of basketball and just in terms of the students and their lives is like, I think that's his legacy. Like, I don't think it's like, oh, it's not Jim Beheim. He's not the two, three zone. Like it's not, it's nothing. I don't think like within that part aspect of the game, I think it's just his ability to relate with his players and build those lasting relationships. I've had the privilege of having great coaches, but none have compared to McKenney. He's unbelievable. He's passionate. He's caring. Uh, he's a great guy overall, as both coach, teacher, and uh, just a friend. So that you know, I, I guess it, it really helps you keep it in perspective. You know, first and foremost, that that you cared about your kids, you cared about your programs, and and you cared about the people that you worked with, um, and they and they return that to you, which I've been fortunate to have. You know, and I you know we're all lying if we say we're not competitive. It, you know, you you want to be thought of someone that could could build a winning program and. Um, and did it the right way. Mm -hmm.